Kuyamora, Guten Morgen, Bonjour. Today we gather on this very auspicious occasion as we come to celebrate the end of our 175th Jubilee year, the founding of our congregation. And we also gather to celebrate the lives of our sisters who are celebrating their jubilees and birthdays. Unfortunately, not all our jubilarians can be present with us here today, but we know that they are joining in with us and we bring them into this Eucharistic celebration. We are celebrating the closing of our Jubilee year in this year, 2020. A year that will be remembered for COVID-19 and for all the losses, pain, suffering, sacrifices, challenges, and trials we may have experienced to some degree. And how fitting that we celebrate this year, because 175 years ago, one year after Mother Bernarda and the First Sisters made their profession, the congregation was named the Sisters of the Holy Cross. Because during the first year, the Sisters experienced many trials and crosses. May I remind us all that we all still need to observe all the COVID-19 protocols of wearing our masks, keeping physical distance, so unfortunately no hugging, and making use of the hand sanitizers provided. For today, however, we come to celebrate 175 years of our foundation, but also a collective, I think, 455 years of dedicated service of our nine jubilarians. And so it gives me great pleasure to welcome our Archbishop, Dabulam Paco, Archbishop of Pretoria, who is our main celebrant. Archbishop Emeritus of Pretoria, George Daniel. Bishop Rodriguez of the Senin Diocese. Monsignor Barney Macalier of Pretoria. Father Jude Burgess, our homilist from Johannesburg, who is the Provincial Superior of the Comboni Missionaries. Father Terry Dierland, the chaplain to the Holy Cross Home, Lady Salvum. Father Vincent Brennan of Rustenburg. Father Anselm Pryor, resident in Holy Cross Home. Father Solomon O of M from the Johannesburg Diocese. Our Denisal brother, Brother Gabriel von Bricti Park in Johannesburg. Sister Heminigil Makoro, Secretary General of the Southern African Catholic Bishops Conference and Sister Victoria Sebisi, also from the South Southern African Catholic Bishops Conference. Sister Letta, Sisters of St. Bridget, the Superior General. Sister Rita Carey, a Mercy Sister from Winterfeld. Sister Mary Muma, our Good Shepherd Sister. Sister Leticia from the Good Shepherd Sisters. I also wish to welcome our provincial leader, Sister Monica Majemwa, our provincial and our provincial councillors here present. And we welcome our jubilarians here present, Sister Maria Biata, Sister Maculata, Sister Gertrude, and Sister Rose, who is celebrating her 70th birthday. And in absentia, we welcome Sister Symphoria, Sister Mary Charles, Sister Mari Michelle. Sister Maria Elena, Sister Marie Andre, and Sister Teresa Mafuta. We welcome all our sisters here present from the Victory Park community, Lady Salborn communities, Messina community, Port Sabello community, Linden community, and our novices and postulants from Victory Park. The representatives of the whole Holy Cross Schools Advisory Council. Ms. Debbie Harris, Principal of Delisar Holy Cross College, Apple Murray, Headmaster of the College, and all the staff who have come to join us. 
We welcome our organist, Duncan Heim, and his wife, Mary. <coughs> and then we welcome all our sisters, relatives, friends, and associates who have joined us for this live streaming. Our congregational leadership team, led by Sister Dorina Zanoni, the Holy Cross Provincials from across the provinces and all our sisters in their various communities. Everybody present, you are most welcome. I now invite Archbishop Davula Mpako to lead us in this Eucharistic celebration. Shall we say? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and now of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. The Jubilee celebration that we are having today is most appropriately an occasion for thanksgiving. Giving thanks to God for the founding of this congregation, that is now for 175 years. Giving thanks to God for the many years of dedication by the sisters who are celebrating their jubilees uh, this year. The time of taking a moment to notice the wonderful things that God has done to us and to give thanks. So it is our prayer to join with the congregation of God and our sisters that God may indeed receive our thanks, their thanks, and that God may continue to bless this congregation so that it may continue to be the kind of witness and presence in the world that it is meant to be. To be the special disciple is also a time for the new one. That we renew our commitment to be who we are called to be and who we have committed ourselves to be. The time to start at first is to come. We pray that God will be with us in this Thanksgiving celebration and that God will be blessed for us. We are aware of our need for God's mercy and God's forgiveness, so we begin by taking a moment. We call to mind our sins, be sorry for them, and ask for God's pardon and God's healing. Together with the ministry of the United States, I confess to all my God's words, thanks to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, bring my thoughts and in my words, bring what I have done.
Grant, we pray, that we may give you thanks for your kindness towards our sisters, who today are eager to renew the gift received from you as they celebrate their duties. Strengthen them, strengthen in them a spirit of perfect charity, so that each day they may more fervently serve your glory than the work of your salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. the letter of St. Paul to the, to the Philippians. Brethren, join in imitating me and mark those who so walk as you have an example in us. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears, Walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is the belly, and their glory in their shame, with minds set on earthly things. But our common wealth is in heaven, and from it we wait a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power which enables him even to subject all things to himself. Therefore, my brethren whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in this way in the Lord, my beloved. The word of the Lord. Yes,
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there shall my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor them. The Gospel of the Lord. We have been very, very beautifully welcomed by Sister Cheryl Ann and all of us who called by name to be part of this closing of the 175th year of the Jubilee celebration of the Sisters of the Holy Cross. And we are truly grateful to be part of this celebration. I was asked to speak today because I'm a Holy Cross boy. <laughs> And the sisters wanted somebody who knew a little bit of the Holy Cross to um, just share a few thoughts. My story with the Holy Cross goes back to Paro. Yes. As, as a child, I was so impressed with this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful institution. Kindergarten, primary school, high school, teachers training colleges, uh, orphanage, hostels, sports fields, the beautiful concerts produced every year, playgrounds, piano lessons, all kinds of sports. And it was really a beautiful, fantastic institution. And then the area being declared and the whole place being utterly and totally destroyed, raised to the ground. And I couldn't believe that this place, which I loved so much, including the Sisters' Chapel, where I made my first confession, gone and gone forever. There was this hatred that said, this school is in the wrong place. And this area is now declared under the group areas, the white area. Everything has to go. And all the sacrifices that went into that place, the orphanage, where the children were since 1918 and the struggles the nuns had to keep the place going and to look after the children and then running away and then the police coming at night to bring them back and the sisters coming out of the convent with their night veils remember the night veil? <laughs> <laughs> to take the girls back into the, into the, the orphanage all destroyed and then something happened, something strange, something beautiful. It showed that the cross triumphs. In the cross there is salvation. Suddenly Holy Cross sisters popped up in the government schools where they went to teach because the Catholic school was gone. The Catholics are in the government schools. Here the sisters pop up. Those who were teaching in the training college, they followed the other training teachers to the government schools, came to evaluate their lessons. They popped up everywhere, in our homes, on the minibuses, on the overcrowded buses. I remember since there many people struggling in to get on the overcrowded bus. And a young man got up and offered her the seats. We were all standing. And another young man said to him, oh, you're only giving her that seat because she's a white woman. He was speaking in his ikhasa. And Sister Arminigil responded in perfect hossa to say, no, he is doing it because he's a well-educated young man who knows an older person needs a seat on the bus. <laughs> Clearly. No, the sisters were not silent. I must say that. They came and they spoke 
They came into the parish, as the parish priest announced, we'll sing hymn number 32. Sister will shout from the back, only verses one and two. <laughs> they took their place alongside the women and the girls, and they brought hope. They brought the one thing that was needed at that time, that as communities were destroyed and families driven apart, as people lost their properties, lost their identity, lost that which was close and beautiful to them, Holy Cross showed that in the cross we triumph. They went in all the new townships, starting little schools, building crashes, getting groups together. They were the transforming presence. Even today, many of the sisters are much older now. Their presence is what counts. This is the witness that they are giving. A listening presence, perhaps not so physically active anymore, but a voice that says, the cross triumphs. Nothing will get us down. And when I was worked in Zambia, I was asked by the Archbishop there to go to work with the Catholic Nurses Guild. I thought, what am I going to do with the Catholic Nurses Guild? I walked into the room, and who was the first one to welcome me? A Holy Cross sister. Hello, are you the one coming to help us? I said, who are you? I'm a Holy Cross sister. I said, oh, I thank God, I'm at home. Whether in South Africa, whether in Zambia, wherever Holy Cross is, that is my home. Because I've seen the witness value. Women who will not be daunted, coming with the spirit of Mother Bernada, nothing will stand in their way. They were not rooted in a building, they were not rooted in peril, they are rooted in Christ. And as they were told from earliest days, the world is your convent. They made themselves at home in little places all over the, all over the show. We acknowledge our jubilarians, and particularly the ones who are present here today. We wish all could be present, but no, not everyone can be here. But who would like to acknowledge Sister Gertrude, Sister Beat Maria, Sister Immaculata, and Sister Rose on her 70th birthday. These sisters represent the beauty and dignity of a faithful life, of remaining and staying the course, and offering what? Offering the heart of what Christ offers us in the Paschal Mystery, offering faith, trust, hope, reconciliation and forgiveness. A call to enculturate the gospel, live the gospel where you are. This is the cry of Holy Cross and clearly in the identity it is. Sisters of the Third Order of St. Francis, but above all, the Holy Cross taking the place alongside the poorest and most marginalized, the disadvantaged, the women and children of the world to promote non-violent relationships and not act for the whole world, but particularly for South Africa, a country with the highest levels of violence against women and children for a country not at war. Here we have a group, they devote themselves to non-violent human relationships and the, at the heart of it all called and sent to continue the mission of Christ. And so the mission today is they are life givers. Working in the Archdiocese of Cape Town was fortunate to have a Holy Cross convent in the parish. And they came with their documents. So the, uh, chapter said this, the council said that we are supposed to be life givers. How can we work in the parish to promote life in a culture on the west coast of South Africa where I worked? We had the highest rate of teenage suicides in South Africa at that time, was the beginning of the, the end of the 1990s. They were there to include all those who were on the peripheries of society. They went out onto the streets walking into the gang-infested areas there, particularly of the Western Cape. They are sisters not of living off a glorious past, although you could very well live off the magnificent works you've done on four continents. But these are the sisters of the here and now. God is in the present. 
and these sisters will engage with us in the present, face to face. So if a Catholic school was closed down, they worked into the, walked into the government school. The Catholic hospital was closed down, they walked straight into the government hospital. Social work, all kinds of work open to women. These sisters just marched in. A friend of mine worked in Krotoskia Hospital, I think she's still there. And all the other Catholic, all the other non-Catholic saying, what's that on your head? What are you, why are you wearing that on your head? And there she is, Holy Cross, in the midst of a godless world, witnessing to the triumph of the cross, the consciousness of cultivating the consciousness that we all belong together. We are all one family. So collaborating and networking with everyone, Catholic, non-Catholic, Christian, non-Christian, we belong to the one God who sent his son Jesus Christ, who through the cross shows us that God loves and God cares. And so their own transformation, their own being transformed, leads them to work towards transformation of all people. And transformation simply means coming back home to know who I am as one created by God, loved by God, found precious by God. God made us and God danced for joy in creating the human being. And the Holy Cross testifies to that by standing alongside suffering humanity, being co-creators to live in solidarity by promoting justice, mercy and equality. So in the cross we triumph, in the crest of the Holy Cross we see the cross and then we see three stars above the cross. The three stars can be from Daniel, those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky and those who lead many to righteousness shall shine like stars forever and ever. It could be a reference to that, but for me it's more a reference to the Transfiguration. The Transfiguration is the completion of the Paschal Mystery. It doesn't end in Calvary. It does end with Christ in glory. And in the Transfiguration we see Christ shining with light, which invites everyone to this will be our end. Holy Cross offers us the triumph of the cross. Transfiguration, all being made beautiful, all being made one in God. And so the cross is the center of our uh, faith, and the completion of the cross is the transfiguration when all will be transformed in Christ. The Holy Cross sisters witness to that day after day by their lives. Of course, it's a process, it begins with work, hard work. Then it goes into rest. After rest comes silence. After silence, contemplation of the presence of God. Is that the end? No. Finally, the Lord takes us by the hand and leads us into the land of joy. That joy he came to bring. I will give you a joy which no one can take away from you. I came that you may have life and that life to its fullness. And the sisters continue. Holy Cross is not finished. After 175 years, they still have plans to open another house in Zimbabwe, to open another house in Namibia. And I'm sure there are other bishops asking, can't you come back to Ntata? You still have your house here. You can come and stay there. <laughs> Go back to the places that you have closed. Holy Cross continues working on the peripheries, working on the margins, gathering in the harvest for which Christ said, you shall all be scattered, but I have come to gather in all the lost sheep. Alongside Christ works the sisters of the Holy Cross. I still have a beautiful gift when I was ordained almost 33 years ago. A Holy Cross sister gave me a sick call set, a little box, everything I need to visit the sick. And whenever I go out to the hospitals, to the homes, to wherever the sick people are, this little kit has accompanied me. It is my link to Holy Cross. She didn't give me a gold chain, no, or a nice suit. Her mind was on the sick. Go to those on the peripheries. Take the set. 
set is old now, still works and functions and beautifully, given by a Holy Cross system. Holy Cross became a household name, a household name. Ask the parents, where does your child go to school? Oh, Holy Cross. Doesn't mean primary school or preschool or high school, secondary school, whatever it is. Oh, Holy Cross. It's become a, high, a household name. During the struggle years in the Cape, Holy Cross has been in, present in Langa, in our, one of our townships there. I don't know from how many years. But just became, if we needed transport, what shall we do? How shall we get to the meeting? Oh, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. We'll ask Sister Alfreda for the combi. <laughs> That was the end. No discussion. The sisters were going to help. There was no doubt. And so, as sisters continue, we like to acknowledge our gratitude for 175 years of presence in different parts of the world. Thank you for your offering. You gave your life so that others may have life. Let me congratulate you through the storms and troubles that came your way. You showed in the cross we triumph and so we wish you every blessing as you continue that you may grow from strength to strength may grow deep and deep into that pastoral mystery which you represent so well that the lord who triumphs through the cross may be your constant companion hail holy cross Amen. Amen. Monica, our provincial, will light the Jubilarian's candles from the Easter candle. And after she has lit all the candles, all the sisters will stand, those of us who can, and sister will lead us in the renewal of our vows.
pray now that this uh, sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We receive with our blessing, O Lord, the offering of themselves, which our sisters desire to reaffirm today. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, graciously conform them more fully to the image of your beloved Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we now praise you, and with joy we proclaim. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts who have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Son, he is one of us resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, than that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, a spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Dabula Anthony our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <coughs> Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirits. Peace to all of you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
We have partaken, O Lord, of the body and blood of your Son, which you have given us on this joyful anniversary. Grant, we pray, that our sisters, refreshed with heavenly food and drink, may proceed happily on the journey towards you already long begun. This we ask of Christ our Lord. Amen. Be seated, please. I now invite Sister Monica, our provincial, and Sister Gertrude to come forward to give a vote of thanks. Sister Gertrude is giving a short vote of thanks on behalf of our jubilarians. just going to say a very short word of thank you on behalf of all the jubilarians. Um, we are very happy. We. Um, it's a pity that we don't have, you know, other companions and so forth. But we are filled with joy. You can't see that because it's deep, deep in our hearts. And we'd like to, to thank God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, who journeyed with us so far. Seemingly, we, are, we feel like we are starting the journey. For me, I'm sure my sisters will agree with me. All the bishops present, we are grateful for journeying with us today. All the priests from different corners of the world, thank you very much for coming to celebrate with us. Sister Monica and the counselors, thank you for arranging this special day. We are actually celebrating two in one. We jubilarians and again Holy Cross 175 years. So we are special really. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a special year for us. I would like to really thank the families of all the jubilarians, those who have gone before us and those who are with us, because the seed of this gift of religious life came from our families. It was planted there. So they are here with us in spirit. Families of the jubilarians, Thank you very much. I would also like to thank, in a special way, the communities where the jubilarians come from. Lady Selborne Sisters community, thank you. Um, Victory Park, thank you very much. Achieve there in Zimbabwe, thank you for the jubilarian who is there in your community. Windu across the border, we thank them. And thank you for supporting us, for supporting us, and we also for supporting you. We journey together. Every person who is present, who shared life with us spiritually, who accompanied us also, even for other needs which we cannot mention. Thank you very much. <laughs> Realebuha, Tinoten, Dangi, thank you. Good morning to you all. Before I start my litany of thanking, I, I have a, a letter here from Sister Dorina 
Zanoni, our superior general, our congregational leader, and the team. And that is addressed to all of us, and she asked me to share this message. It is with joy that we congratulate you on this special triple celebration. We thank you all, the sisters of the Southern African province, on the close of the 175th anniversary of the congregation for your contribution to keeping the common memory alive. And they quote Mother Bernada's words, may God reign in our hearts. These are the words of Mother Bernada. To all our sister jubilarians, silver, gold, diamond, sapphire, platinum, and crystal, present here, and those back in the communities who cannot be with you in person. We thank you for your many years of dedicated service and commitment to the congregation and to the vowed life. The province is a living legacy of your love for God and his people that remains written in the hearts and minds of those who have become your own. A word of sincere gratitude to your families, particularly your parents, who selflessly gave you to Holy Cross. To Sister Rose Grugan, on your 70th birthday, may God bless you and keep you in the palm of his hand. And this is a quote from John O'Donoghue. Beauty is the illumination of your souls. And there is an, a promise of the Holy Mass that has been offered for us um, at the Generalate and is signed by the Congregational Leadership Team. So on behalf of the sisters, all the sisters of the Southern African province, I wish to thank God really for the gift of our founders. And sometimes when, when we think of uh, the three young girls, uh, the oldest was 23 years old. Um, and that was it. They made vows, and on this day, uh, 20, uh, 176 years ago, they had to start uh, a congregation. They didn't know that they were starting a congregation. They were just starting something some service uh, that was going to uplift the girl child in Switzerland, and the girl child was relegated to the kitchen and, and, and God knows where. And I, I wish they could have known that God will bring us so far, will bring this seed so far. I think they would not have been so frightened, but um, that's, that's how they felt. It, it was difficult. And for us, perhaps we can draw some strength that our little contribution is going to make a difference and God is going to multiply that in the way he knows how. So what is God wants from us is simply faithfulness to do our little bit and then to leave the rest to him, just like our three young uh, founders did 176 years ago. So we want to thank them, Sister. Uh, Bernada, Maria Bernada, Sister Feliciana, and Sister Cornelia, under the guidance and direction of Father Theodosius Florentini, who risked to trust God and ventured into the unknown. Um, and for, for this uh, celebration, we really want to uh, thank all of you who have honored us. These times are very difficult to leave your safe house that you know that here there is no coronavirus, but I'm going somewhere. I don't know whether I will come back, positive or negative, <laughs> but you are here. So Archbishop Davula, we really want to thank you. you uh, normally we meet here with a coffin here, but uh, today there is no coffin. We are celebrating life. Thank you. Um, we thank you, Archbishop Emeritus George Daniel. Usually, you know, most of the times we are sad and all that, but today we, we have left the sadness aside and we thank you. And um, Bishop Joao Roderick, all the way from Berlin, thank you very much for coming 
uh, Sister Emily Gould and Sister Victoria, thank you for coming to honor us. I saw Sister, Sister Kensan. Oh yes, uh, Sister Kensan, thank you very much for, for coming at short notice. The invitation, I think, was confirmed a day before yesterday or so. Sister Kensan is the president of the um, Leadership Conference for Consecrated Life in, Southern Af in South Africa. So thank you very much for coming and to, for representing the conference. Uh, we thank you for the Terry Chaplin. Uh, good times, bad times, you are always there. Thank you. I'm on Senior Bani Makalia, thank you. Um, Father Soli, Father Soli is the Secretary General of the Franciscan family to which we belong. So we thank you very much for representing the whole, the whole family and for honoring us. Father Anselm, thank you. Father Vincent Brennan, thank you very much. Uh, Father Jude, you called yourself a Holocaust boy. You really proved it. You know, some of the things that you share, we don't even know ourselves, you know. But uh, you are in the living history of Holocaust. We, we really, it was a moving testimony of the little contributions that Holy Cross have made in your life and in the society that you have um, experienced, what you have experienced. I've been also asked to um, give apologies from uh, the different bishops uh, who could not make it, who would have liked to be with us and could not make it. So Bishop Stembele uh, sends his apology, Bishop Liborius Nashenda from Bintu, Archbishop Nashenda from Bindu sends apologies. Archbishop Zoli Lempambani sends apologies. Bishop Joseph Mary Kizito sends apologies. Bishop Edward Risi sends uh, apologies. Archbishop Buti Shakale, uh, Archbishop in Johannesburg, uh, Archbishop William Slattery, and Bishop Michael Basera of Mashingo. They have all promised Holy Mass. It's no wonder why there's so much joy here. So we, we thank them, uh, even if they cannot be with us physically on account of the pandemic, but we thank the holy masses that they are offering where they are. Uh, Father Jude, I thank you once again. Uh, we thank you, Brother Gabriel, for being with us. Um, and uh, De La Salle, the Holy Cross, uh, uh, Family, Miss Harris, Mr. Arthur, Mary, Mr. Neil Benson sends apologies. He had already made other arrangements and so he could not be with us, but he sends his love and support. Mr. Duncan Hine and Mrs. Hine, thank you very much uh, for your time, not only now, but uh, in preparation for this event. And we and for bearing all the hassles that were connected to this day. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nyasha, Ms. Simwa, Ms. Antoinette Seward, Ms. Lindy Hammond, Ms. Julie Rogers, Ms. Sally, I think didn't come. Anyway, I thank you very much. And um, all our sisters from other congregations, from uh, good Good Shepherd, Mercy, um, St. Bridget, uh, yes, Sister Leta, is, um, General uh, Sister St. Bridget. Um, thank you very much. You know, this day, it, it, was, it was difficult to really arrange for this event because uh, we didn't know, you know, with these uh, COVID restrictions, how far to go and whether to have it at all. But um, there were coordinating teams that really risked and said, okay, we will do our best to make sure that everyone will be safe and to make sure that this celebration will have meaning as we close the 175th uh, Jubilee. And so we, we had a coordinating team, uh, Sister Rodmedo, Sister Rodina, Sister Cheryl Ann, who is the MC here, Sister Pauline, Sister Luigi, 
sorry, Mr. Luigi Salemi and uh, Sheldon, who we, whom we have seen running up and down. So we really want to thank you. Um, there was a core team. Uh, I just saw they, was, they had sleepless nights trying to put the video together of all the Holy Cross activities. So you will get a token of uh, appreciation just by this little um, production, which shows all our little contribution to the church. So we want to thank you most sincerely, um, the organizing and coordinating team. We also had a, an organizing and coordinating team here uh, at Lady Selborne, Sister Gladys and um, Gladys Papiso and the, the community here. Uh, without you, we would, we would not be able to be where we are and to have this venue and to have everything that um, we see in the decorations uh, everywhere. We want to thank you for all the meetings and all the organization that you put in place uh, for this day. We want to thank um, Sister Florence and Sister Clara and the nurses for looking after us and they, to do the screening and the health and organizing all that, making sure that we are going away safe. Um, Sister Helen and the group of nurses, you will see at this, there will be a time when the cake will be blessed and you will have a chance to have a look at it. So we thank Sister Helen Bote and her team. And this cake is so beautiful. Anyhow, we thank you very much for all the time that you put in and your skills that you put in there. All the communities that have supported us um, throughout the province by sending just little taste of their activities. So, uh, and, and that was um, then edited into this um, uh, video. Uh, we want to thank all our communities um, uh, locally and abroad. Uh, we thank the communities that are represented here, Mustina Community, Botabelo, Victory Park, Formation, and all the communities that have offered Holy Mass for this day. And we thank every one of you. Uh, our relatives and friends um, who are with us today, or members of our families who are with us, thank you very much for coming uh, to support us. Uh, lastly, MC, thank you. It was, <laughs> thank you for making sure that things go the way they did today. Um, as St. John Paul II exhorts us, let us continue to remember the past with gratitude, to live the present with enthusiasm, and to look forward to the future with confidence. With that, I thank each one of you. Before the final blessing, being aware that we are still in the midst of the COVID pandemic, and we still need to adhere to all the regulations associated with the state. Our refreshments after mass will take a different form. So everybody present is invited for lunch. So after mass, we will proceed to the area where the packed lunch will be distributed. Unfortunately, because of our venue and being an old age home and for the safety of our residents here, we will not be able to visit anyone in the, the old age home. And so to protect our senior citizens and our residents and to keep each other safe, we are encouraged not to linger too long after the celebration. And once more, I urge you to adhere to all the protocols, wearing your mask, using hand sanitizers that's available, and keeping the physical distance. So that includes no hugging. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hail Holy Cross. Amen. Shall we stand for the blessing? Congratulations again to you, uh, sisters of the Holy Cross, and may God continue to bless you.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Our message ended and we go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. So I'm asked to take the cake with me home. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Loving God, we thank you for your many gifts. We thank you for the gift of life you have given us. We thank you for the gift of faith that you have given us, the faith that gives us hope in our lives, and the hope that keeps us going through the ups and downs of life. We thank you in a special way today for the Sisters who have given their lives to you as they celebrate their jubilee today. We ask that you bless this cake, bless those who prepared it for us, and may this cake be a sign of thanksgiving, of celebration, and of unity as we share it. Bless this cake in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.